let's briefly review the general derivative properties that we've introduced so far. And then we're going to look at how these now factor in when we're looking at composite functions. So to differentiate a power function, x to the n, that original exponent comes down as a factor in front. We reduce the original exponent by 1, and then we multiply by the derivative of x. To find the derivative of e to the x, that becomes e to the x, that function remains unchanged, and we multiply by the derivative of x. To find the derivative of the natural log of x, this becomes 1 over x times, again, the derivative of x. So when we introduced these properties, we always included that part of the, part of the property, the derivative of x, which always equaled 1. Because, again, that's just a special case of a power function where the derivative of x to the first is 1 x to the 0, or just 1. So that was a trivial step in all of those properties as we initially introduced them. But now that's going to take on a little more meaning. So we can still apply these general derivative rules to composite functions. But instead of multiplying by the derivative of x, we're going to replace that with the derivative of the inner function. So instead of just taking the derivative of x, which will always be 1, we'll be taking the derivative of some more complex function, so we'll have a little bit more work to do. So in example 5, we want to find m prime for the function x squared plus 4 to the third power. So again, we already identified this as being something of the form u cubed. So since this is a function of the form u cubed, we could find m prime of x by evaluating this using our rule for power functions. So this would become 3 u squared times the derivative of u. So that's just using that general format for our power rule. But now in place of u, we'll write in that inner function. So this will become 3 times x squared plus 4 squared times the derivative of x squared plus 4. So the derivative of u would have just been 1, or the derivative of x would have just been 1. But now we're taking the derivative of a more complex function. So this will become 3 times x squared plus 4 squared times the derivative of x squared plus 4 will be 2x. Or, simplifying here, we would get 6x. x squared plus 4, that quantity squared. So differentiating composite functions isn't really very different than what we've done in the past. The only difference is, instead of this last term being sort of inconsequential, now it has more meaning in terms of that final result. So to find n prime in example 6, this is something of the form e to the u. So that derivative would be e to the u times the derivative of u. And now we'll replace u with that inner function, 0.04x. and take the derivative of 0.04x to get 0.04 e to the 0.04x. So again, applying that general rule for the derivative of exponential functions. In example 7, we've got something of the form u to the 1 half. So to find s prime of x, this will become 1 half times u to the negative 1 half times the derivative of u. 
So again, really just following that general power function, just with a rewrite of the original problem. So this will become 1 half times, we'll replace u with that inner function again, so 4 minus x squared to the negative 1 half times the derivative of that interior function, 4 minus x squared. So this will give us 1 half times 4 minus x squared to the negative 1 half times negative 2x. Or cleaning up our algebra a little bit, the negative 1 half sends this to the denominator. 1 half times 2 will reduce to 1. So we get negative x over the square root of 4 minus x squared. In example 8, same idea. This is something of the form natural log of u. So our derivative will be 1 over u times the derivative of u. And then we can replace that with that interior function. where the derivative of 2x plus 3 will just be 2, so we get 2 over 2x plus 3. So taking the derivative of composite functions really, again, just goes back to using those general rules that we had established. But what's changing, instead of, what's changing is that instead of multiplying by the derivative of x in each case, we're multiplying by the derivative of whatever that interior function was.